Hello YouTube, I'm assuming here you're here because you're in a control systems class and your professor asks you to find the stability of a system. Um, so to go about doing that there's a few different methods that they'll probably go over but hands down the best one, well I'll, I'll, the best one I know of at least at the moment is the uh, Ruth Hurwitz method that I might be pronouncing correctly. But basically you take a transfer function uh, in this case, it's good. We just got our transfer function. Sometimes they will give it to you in a unity feedback, however. Then you have to just do the feedback loop. I'm um, assuming you, you'll probably know how to do that, but as a good um, litmus test to see if you have to do that, look for the constant here. If you don't have a constant, if it's just that, you probably have a feedback loop. And just look for the problem statement saying unity feedback loop or some other feedback loop. So what we need to do here is immediately, we care about the denominator to figure out the poles for the stability of this. So start writing out over here the highest power and just keep on going on down. Give yourself room, I'm not giving myself much room until you hit the constant as to the zero. So then start populating the coefficients of the denominator only in the first two rows. So go, let's see, s to the fifth is one, s to the fourth is seven, s to the third is sixth, 42, 8, 56. And you can round it out with zeros. You can go as far as you want. Now here's a trick. Um, as You care about this first column and its signs. So whatever you do this does not, you, you can manipulate this however you want. As long as you don't change the sign. <laughs> so there's a common factor of seven in this row. So let's just divide everything by seven. Not going to affect the sign, so we're fine. All right. So what we're going to do is take the matrix right here, get the determinant, negate it, and divide by this value. So right off the bat, you'll notice it's 6 minus 6. Well, that's 0. We don't have to do any of the work. All right, move over here. Ignore this column and do these two. So that's 8 minus 8. Uh-oh, 0. Now go over here, ignore... The Use the first column, ignoring this one, and then take the one to the right, zero, zero. Well, we've got ourselves an entire row of zeros. So what are we going to do to fix that? Well, look to the column of uh, the row above, s to the fourth, and write out the coefficients. So this is going to be 1s to the fourth, 6s to the two, and 8. So write that out over here. Uh s to the fourth plus 6s squared plus 8 and take the derivative 4s cubed plus 12s and that's 0. So these coefficients are going to be your new terms here. So you're going to have 4, 12, and 0. And once again let's just divide everything by 4 to make it, our lives easier. So now we've got 1 and 3. Okay, so now go about your business as if there was no zeros in that row. So say, all right, this determinant 3 minus 6, x negative 3, but you negate it. So it's 3 divided by 1, 3. Over here, 0 minus 8, negative 8, negate that, 8 over 1, 8, and that's just 0. Go again down here, we got 8 minus 9, negative 1, negate that, 1 over 3. Because this one. Everything in this row is divided by this value. Everything in this row is divided by this value. Everything in this row is divided by this value. So over here, ignore here, go here. So 1 times 0, 0, that's 0. All right, last one, home stretch. 0 minus 8 over 3 is going to be negative 8 over 3, but negate that. So that's 8 over 3 divided by 1 over 3, but I'm not even going to write anything here because I know that's positive. And I don't need to do this or anything because I've now got this first column, which is what I want. So now that I've got the first column, let's look at the signs. We've got positive, 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 positive. So there's no sign change, so you may be tempted to rush along and say, all right, well, you know, it's 
fifth order polynomial, um, all five roots are on the left side and the system's stable. But you would be incorrect. You need to first look at the top before the all row zero. No sign change here. So we're just going to say one, uh, one pole is on the left. And the reason I say one is because now we have to look at the row of zeros. But since we utilize this row to get these coefficients, we're going to look at all these from the fourth order down. Because everything from a row of zeros has to be in pairs because they're complex roots. And complex roots are complex conjugates. So these are going to be on the j omega axis itself. So if I draw your graph here, j omega, it's the imaginary, here's the real sigma. At the moment, we've got one pole on the left, so let's just call it there. Who knows where it is? Now, if you look here from 4 to 0, no sign change. So that means the pairs are on the j omega. So you might be tempted to say that this is marginally, margin, <laughs> marginally stable, but it is not, because there's a multiplicity rule. If only one pair was on the axis here, it would be marginally stable. But since there's a multiple, there's two pairs, it is not stable. So this is an unstable system with one pole on the left and four on the j omega axis. And that's uh, the criteria for the special case whenever they're all zeros. I'll do another one where I show um, uh, zero in the first column.